Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. That's right, the brackets have been announced. It is Sunday, March the 14th. We're recording this late at night. You're going to hear it on Monday. Um, But man, we have got 68 teams in a bracket for the first time in two years. Chris, how are you feeling? Man, I'm okay. I'm okay. It was a tough day for me. So, it, it, so, so betting wise, or, or no, are, no, I didn't even play a lot today. So, same but there's I, only five games today. So, my but, my guys, my guys hurt me. I wanted it, that one. I oh, wanted the, that the, one bad. Oh, the SEC championship. Yeah. Yeah. So I did not realize that LSU had not won an SEC championship, SEC tournament championship since 19, uh, 1980. So it'd been yeah. 41 years. Like I thought Alabama was hurting with it being 30 years. Like, I remember being eight years old and watching that. Um, but you, like, that was before you were born. That's right. So No, I wanted, I wanted that one. And we, and we were right there, too. Oh, Lord, yes. It, it, it just, it, LSU has the talent. Like, it yep. has not clicked this year. Um, but that that trifecta. There's not there's not another team that averages 80 points in this in, in, all, of, in all of college basketball. Well, no, Colgate averages 80. Uh, oh, okay. But is LSU number one? Is it? Uh, it is that I, I would I would be shocked if we're not in the uh, way up there at the top. Now we don't play a lot of defense, but there aren't a lot of people that can fill the bucket up the way we do. Now you uh you are correct about that. Let's see. Da-da-da. I am looking right now. Uh, eighty two point two LSU is eighth in scoring out of three hundred and forty seven teams. Holy okay. Now out of the teams above us, how many of them made the tournament? Uh, are they smaller schools or are they a lot of them? Like Colgate probably is up there. Uh, Colgate is second and Arkansas is seventh. I've, I've got a note about that. So, wow. Like that, that's the only Arkansas that shocks me. I didn't realize Arkansas would average that many, that much, that many points. 82.4 is what okay. Arkansas has averaged. That um, surprises me. Yeah. Yeah. No, they are. They're definitely that. Uh, as far as defense goes for LSU. They gave up seventy five point two a game. That's two hundred and eighty sixth out of three hundred forty seven. Yeah, I knew that. No, that's okay. So, but yeah, th- this one, man, uh, th- that game between Alabama and LSU was an all freaking timer today. Like it was, it, whoever ended up winning it, like it wasn't going to matter. That was a classic game that is going to be played on SEC Network over and over and over again. I mean, it was it, it constant back and forth. So I was, I'll tell you this, I was terrified. It, you yeah. remember me complaining a few weeks ago about Doug Shows, like the uh, the official. He called the yeah. game today. He's the one that called the Alabama Arkansas game. He's the one that called Alabama Auburn like a few weeks ago. Like he he does this, and it and it hurts both teams. He does not call the game. And it's not just it's his whole team. They don't call the game consistently. It's like there's ticky tack fouls, and then there's players just beating the crap out of each other. And once guys kind of get into a routine, they kind of get some consistency going in the game, runs start here and there. There's no rhythm to it after that because as soon as something gets started, and LSU would start having runs, and they'd start calling fouls, and Alabama would get back into it. And then Alabama would go on a run, and they'd start calling fouls, and LSU would get back into it. So it was it, it worked out well for the entertainment purpose, but as far as rhythm to the game, there was none. There was just none. So it was, it was a hell of a ball game, though. Hell of a ball game. Um, the plus six covered. Did you at least have the plus six? Yeah, I did. I did play as with the with the spread. I had some on the money line, but I don't. Care. I didn't care about that. Though. I just wanted the win. I don't care yeah. about the money. No, I, no, that I'm, makes sense. I throw away both bets if I could just get the win. No, that totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. All right, let's dive into the NCAA tournament. We have got a lot to discuss this evening, and we will start off with the West region. Um. First game on the board. There's no times on these games yet. The NCAA is yeah, going to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, we have no clue. Next next couple of days. Uh, we're going to figure out a lot here. I, I was shocked at this one. Gonzaga is the number one overall seed. I'm not shocked at that. What I'm shocked at is they have already beaten this season the number two, three, and four seeds in that region. Yeah. I was shocked that the committee did that. Like, they, they beat all of them by double digits. Like, it, it, I, don't, I don't understand what the purpose of this was. Uh, on top of that, number four seed, Virginia, and number three seed, Kansas. So, Virginia has to play uh, Ohio, who's a 13 seed, and Kansas has to play Eastern Washington. Both of those had to pull out of their conference tournaments because of COVID issues. Uh, 
Virginia, for sure, has already said they are not even travel. They're not going to get to practice until Thursday. They don't get to travel to Indianapolis until Friday. Like, that is cutting it by the teeth, man. So, I, who knows what's going to happen with that. Like, if Virginia ends up going out. Oh, the, uh, the first four out, by the way, so the replacement teams. Louisville, Colorado State, St. Louis, and Ole Miss. The two teams to pay attention to here, obviously, are Kansas and Virginia. If Kansas goes out, they're a three seed. Louisville would jump in their spot as a three seed against Eastern Washington. Kind of crazy. And so, yeah. um, I'm really shocked that Ole Miss didn't make it, by the way. Ole Miss, uh, I don't know that I'm that shocked. Like, if you look at their resume, there's not a lot of big, big wins there. You know, it, it, look, looking at the at their net team sheet, um, I could see why they were left out. Like, it, it but may, and maybe it's just me. I, I don't think that they valued the SEC very much. When LSU got an eight seed in yeah. instead of something higher than that, yeah. uh, that, that kind of let me know. I was eh, pretty disappointed in that, but it's okay. I'll well, take my I, spot. I will tell you this. Uh, and we'll we'll get to it in just a little bit, but I, I think there is a, a chance for you guys to get to the Sweet 16 there. But we'll, we'll talk you? about it. No, no, we'll talk about that. That's uh, fine. Staying in the in the West region. Uh, so, oh, Kansas, by the way, has announced. They uh, they have three players that are not traveling with them. They have not announced those players yet. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, I do know that one of the guys that tested positive is a guy that played in their most recent win, that got them into the game against Texas. So that's right. Uh, craziness going on in this in this region for sure. I, I was shocked that they put Kansas and Virginia both in this region, considering those are the two that have had COVID issues. So uh, with that said, moving on, Wichita State and Drake. That is the play-in game. The winner of that gets to play against six seed USC. That was a little bit shocking, I guess. Uh, Wichita State and Drake both were teams that on most expert brackets had they had not done enough. Like yeah. their their losses in their conference tournaments had knocked them out. This is this is I mean, I'm looking at several of these teams and I just think Ole Miss is substantially better than them. That's it's it, I, I I tend to And agree. I know that the tournament of sixty four is not always the best sixty four teams, but the teams that are not the best sixty four teams are conference champions, and these are neither. And so this is why I had a problem with Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss plays against both those teams. I think Ole Miss is substantially I think Vegas favors favors them more than that. They think that they're a better team, and I think that they they would they would win and cover most of their games. So looking at Ole Miss's uh net team sheet. They were three and five in quad one. They had a win over Tennessee, a win at Missouri, and a win at Auburn. Those are their quad one wins. Uh, but they also had two quad three losses. They lost to Wichita State uh, back in January. Yeah. They and that was at home. Like it, that's I, and I'm that sure I'm sure that's it, one of the reasons yeah. why Wichita State is in this and they're not is they we actually have to see them head to head. So I think I think the biggest thing here was if. If Ole Miss had not lost to Vanderbilt at the end of the season, I think Ole Miss is in. Probably right. Like, You're probably right. I think that's the biggest thing. Because uh, they, they lost to Mississippi State and Vanderbilt in consecutive weeks. Uh, February yeah, that's tough. To that's tough. you got to win one of those games. You're, you're probably right. And I'm, so, and I'm probably more biased. But anyway, we can move on. Um, so with that, uh, I, I forgot to mention Creighton is also in this bracket. Of course, yeah. we know what Creighton has been <laughs> has been dealing with with Greg McDermott and him being suspended and what he's, he's going to coach in the tournament uh, because he did in the big East tournament, but you know uh, who knows? So I I think we've got a couple of 12 and 13 uh, seeds here. You uh, UC Santa Barbara at the, as the 12 seed against Creighton and Ohio against Virginia. That's, that's two ripe upsets right there. Now Creighton is still a really, really good team. But who knows what's going to happen this week with them? I mean, it, it you you can't tell. But Wichita State and Drake that was a little bit shocking. Um, Oregon, they had won eleven of twelve before they lost to Oregon State in the Pac-12 tournament. They have now had eleven straight twenty-win seasons. Dana Altman as a seven seed is a little bit scary, I would think, for uh, VCU and for Iowa. Like, I you you agree on uh, on this one? Yeah, I mean, I. I... <laughs> I, I like I like Oregon and I think I think Oregon's a pretty good basketball team. So I, I feel like they might have been a little bit underseeded here, but it, maybe not. Maybe not. It's hard. It's hard for me to figure out who's who's underseeded and who's not, just because it's 
it's a it's just been a weird year. It it certainly has. It, if you look at Ken Palm, um, you know Oregon is down at like thirty six, so maybe they're not underseeded. Yeah, maybe they're um, not. That's right. But it, you know at, they're number sixteen in offensive efficiency, number seventy six in defensive efficiency. Like it, it, Oregon's a pretty good. Ba- like they're a really good basketball team. <laughs> uh, Iowa as the two seed, they obviously Gonzaga beat them early, early on. Um, but they were right there with Illinois on Saturday in the Big Ten tournament. They have beaten Ohio State. They, I mean, they, this is a good basketball team with a a Player of the Year candidate. Uh, Luca Garza is fantastic. Did he actually win Player of the Year? Do you remember? I th- yeah, I think he did win Player of the Year. I think yeah, he was yeah. named Player of the Year, and I think Iowa's scary. Oh, yes. I mean, Iowa, they are number five at Ken Palm, number two in offensive efficiency. At the end of January, Iowa – was like number one hundred and forty something, like one forty seven, I think, right. in defensive efficiency. They are up to number fifty now. No, they they yeah, fixed- that, that, they've made they've made amazing strides. You're talking about a team that has gotten better as the years gone on. Oh yes, you want to talk about a fun coaching matchup? They are facing Grand Canyon in the first round, a fifteen right. seed. Grand Canyon's coach is Bryce Drew, former Vanderbilt coach, former Valpo coach, and of course uh, the guy that you know, is known for the upset in the tournament. Uh, what was it called? The Homer play? Like the... Yeah. <laughs> and so, I'm, I'm excited about that. I love Fran McCaffrey. I, I yep. can't wait to get some shot of him screaming at somebody on the sideline. It's it's going to be a good time. So, I feel like this is the easiest region, and, and it kind of makes sense for Gonzaga. Man, okay, so I, I, I beg to differ. I think you're putting too much stock in the COVID stuff. And maybe so. I think I think Virginia is seeded at four because Virginia didn't get to compete in the ACC championship game in the, in the ACC tournament because of COVID. I think Virginia is going to be fine. I think Virginia is going to be scary. At, at, Virginia just hasn't impressed me all that much this year. Like maybe okay. maybe I'm nuts. Uh, so they've got six losses. Um, three of them were, but they're built. They're built for the tournament. This is what sucks about LSU is defense wins in tournament play. That's true, but this is not the same Virginia team that, that we're used to. Virginia right now, number 33 in defensive efficiency. They are number 12 in yeah. offensive efficiency. Like, it, this is a, a complete flip-flop. Of They're different, but st- 32 is still, yes, you're right. They're usually single digits defensive oh, dis- yes. efficiencies. They've, they've been top 10 every year under, uh, under yes. Tony Bennett. Being 30th is still pretty damn good. Oh, yeah. No, Absolutely. Absolutely. When you've got Ohio State at seventy nine and Baylor at forty four and stuff like that, <laughs> I was just, I was just yeah. about to say it seems like more teams have gone more offensive centric, which is why I think defense is in tournament play. Defense is more consistent than offense. That's my pro- That's my fear with with LSU, and that's my fear with teams like LSU in the tournament. And now you bring up LSU. Let's go ahead and move into the East region. LSU is the eight seed. St. Bonaventure as the nine seed. St. Bonaventure is a serious team. They are, yep, they are very, really well very good team. Uh, LSU That's is not going to be an easy game. No, you're right. LSU is number 29 at Ken Palm. LSU is the number five offensive efficiency team in the country. They're number 125 in defensive efficiency. Um, St. Bonaventure is number 25 at Ken Palm. And if you look at what they do, they're 38th in offensive efficiency, 17th in defense. So you, you got a classic, you know, Good or great offense against really good defense going on here. Uh, in St. Bonaventure, man, they they just play insanely well together. They don't have a bunch of big time wins, but this is a team that that can scare you. You know, they they didn't have a lot of non conference games to be able to uh, hang their hat on, but you know, a bunch of wins over uh, VCU and St. Louis and Davidson and stuff like that. Like that, it's a scary team. I would imagine that LSU's talent is going to be able to get them through uh- that. I don't think St. Bonaventure has played a team as athletic as us. As uh, us. It, 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 look, they could have played uh, a ton of teams in the SEC and a ton of teams yeah. in the Big Ten, and they wouldn't have. LSU is, yeah. is, is to me, top I think, 10 I think most we're gonna, athletic I know, I know I'm right for getting upset by just saying this. I, I, think, I think we're the most athletic team in, in our in our quadrant of the of the of the bracket not oh, just yeah. not in the east but but in but in our like that north half of the east yes I, th- I think we are the most athletic team and i don't know that it's close michigan has to play the winner of mount st mary's and texas southern and i'm telling you if if lsu it, either lsu or st bonaventure whichever one um either one of those could knock off michigan 
If, I really like where we're located. I really oh, do yeah. think that we've got a chance to to knock them off and get to the second weekend if we can get by St. Bon. I know that sounds insane because Michigan's a really, really good team. Well, yeah, but they're not the same right now. That's the seniors Isaiah Livers and Eli Brooks are both out right now. It looks like yeah. Brooks is going to play, but he's not going to be a hundred percent. Not going to be a hundred percent, man. I, you indefinite. don't want to play against us. We're going to run at a pace where if you're not a hundred percent. You're, you're not going to hang with LSU. This is not one of those teams where you can gut it out. We're just a different style of basketball team. We're always pressing tempo, and they're they're constantly putting pressure on you to keep scoring because they're going to hang 80. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely right about that. Uh, moving into the 5-12 and the 4-13, uh, Florida State, UNC Greensboro, not a lot to say about that. Florida State has kind of dwindled down the stretch a little bit. They did get that win over North Carolina in the ACC tournament and then turned around and lost to Georgia Tech. Um, and that's their second loss to Georgia Tech this year. Colorado and Georgetown is interesting. Like, Georgetown got in as as a team that is 13 and 12. However, right. they have won eight of their last 10. The They're only on fire. The only two losses were both to UConn. Um, I think Colorado may be a little bit overseeded here. They're only, I do too. They've got three quad one wins this year, and that's it. And all of them were over USC. They are a matchup nightmare for USC, but they they were like three and four in quad one, and not not a ton. But I think they're like seven and one in quad two. But none of the quad two wins were over NCAA tournament teams. My my guy, Mister Ewing, is going to the second weekend. I'm telling you, you I'm think, telling you, you right think, now. How much fun would that coaching matchup between Ewing and Leonard Hamilton be? Oh no, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. I can't I just can't wait. I I I love Patrick. I love Georgetown. That is old school basketball, you know, and the likes of which I just grew up learning about and and and, and studying the history of the game. And they just they don't make guys like that anymore. They don't make men like John Thompson, you know, and, and I just and the storyline on that is is fantastic. Right, like him when winning. they when they beat the hell out of Creighton. Yes, I just thought this team's special. This team really is. I know their record says they're mediocre. I know their record says they're better. But you know they're they're a five hundred basketball team. Man, don't tell me about their record in November and December, okay? Yeah. Because that was a long ass time ago. That look at look at what they've done since eight yeah. and two in their last ten, and and the only losses were to UConn. They've beaten Creighton uh, a couple of times. That I mean they. They are rolling. They beat Xavier. They they have. There's a reason why they won the Big East title. I'll That's just say right. That. Um, the play-in game. So the winner of this gets to play against number six BYU, yep. Michigan State, and UCLA. Now I had a feeling that they were going to do this to try and get more people to watch uh, the, the play first four. In, the play-in round. I did. I thought the same thing. Yep. I thought the same damn thing. Michigan State UCLA is a monster matchup. That's going to do a huge number. Oh by the way. yes. Oh yeah. yes. I mean it's it, it's do or die. You That's know? right. So, moving on from there, seven seed UConn. Um, let's see. What, what else am I? Oh, Texas and Abilene Christian. Um, Abilene Christian's good. This is, you know, in-state game, whatever. Texas right. won the Big 12. You know, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, they have finally got it clicking under Shaka Smart, it looks like. Uh, UConn and Maryland. That is a fascinating game. Fascinating game. UConn, they are... Uh, I kind of think both these teams are under uh, UConn is heavily underseeded. UConn is number 16 at Ken Palm, yeah. and Maryland is number 31 at Ken Palm. Now, Maryland took a ton of losses, and they haven't had any any really good wins in the last, uh, yeah. like, month. So, Look, the Big Ten, the Big Ten is brutal, man. Oh, yeah. just, be, just because you struggled in, in league doesn't, doesn't mean you're a bad team. I'm telling you, I, I think both these teams are heavily underseeded. I just do. I was shocked that UConn ended up with a seven seed when they play with James Booknight. Now remember, he missed almost a month. That's uh, right. They are eleven and three with him. Their only losses, they lost twice in close games to Creighton, and they lost once to Villanova on the road by eight points. Like, and that was when Villanova was fully healthy. That's right. Villanova was clicking. This yeah. this UConn team is legit. They have a chance to get to the second weekend as well. Uh, and then, of course, at the bottom of the bracket, Alabama, they get to face off with number 15, Iona. The Gales with Slick Rick Patino. Uh, that, is, that is pretty nuts, man. It, it, 
Rick Pitino back in the tournament, you know, after being fired at Louisville in 2016, 2017, after after that season, uh, this is a lot of fun. I've been, you know me, I've been pulling. Yeah. If anybody has been following Twitter for we've, a week we, straight, we have been on this Iona train all week. All oh yeah. week we wanted this to happen. Because that was their only way of getting in, by the way. Oh, yeah. Their absolutely. only way of getting in was, was winning the tournament. Well, Iona is, uh, they, they've had like three or four different COVID pauses, like, all yep. kinds of stuff. And, you well, know, they're good now. They're ready to run, and Rick knows how to coach in tournament play. They are. And that's why they ran through that conference like shit through a goose, man. Oh, yeah. They are 12 and 5 overall. They have won their last six games. Um, but, I mean, they, they've had, they didn't even play a game in January. Like, no, no games. They, they no, played it's insane. December 23rd, they beat Coppin State. February 12th, they came back and they beat Manhattan. Like, at December 23rd all the way to February 12th, they did not play. And then they lost February 13th uh, at Man- or sorry at home against Manhattan. Then on Wednesday of that week, they lost to Quinnipiac, and they haven't lost again. So, you know, they are rocking and rolling, and they got through the Metro, Athletic, uh, or Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, the MAAC, the MAAC, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But, yeah, <laughs> now, yeah. now we've got Rick Pitino uh, back coaching against an SEC team like he used to do back when he was at Kentucky, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Now, possible second-round matchup here, Alabama and UConn. First off, the last time that Alabama made it to the Elite Eight, they were knocked out by UConn. Um, the coaching matchup here is fun, though. Nate Oates against Dan Hurley. Nate Oates was the lead assistant for Bobby Hurley, when Bobby Hurley was the head coach at Buffalo. And, of course, Bobby and Dan are brothers. Like, That's right. That is an awesome connection there. I, I thought it was it, – and they, the NCAA can tell me that they don't set up storylines. I don't buy it. I don't buy well, it. Well, now, I'll tell you this. If they set up storylines, the first thing they would have done is they would have put App State in Michigan's bracket instead of in, uh, in, <laughs> God, in Gonzaga's bracket. That tells me these people have never watched college football ever in the history of their life. Agreed. Agreed. Um, because if we could have somehow finagled it to where we got an App State Michigan round one game, that's that's what that's what college sports fans would love. I agree. I right? agree. Right. Oh, I, so I do think I think they look at some of these storylines, but some of them I think they're completely oblivious to. I, this is true. I, I'm I'm betting you're right. I bet they don't watch a lot of football. Um, by the they way, don't, they the, don't know that there was a historic game played between App State and Michigan. The uh, the chairman of the committee was Mitch Barnhart from Kentucky. And yeah. I thought it was uh, very funny to see him have to put Rick Pitino in the bracket <laughs> yeah. um, when when Kentucky and Louisville both did not make it. So Louisville getting kept out uh, while Rick now Pitino he, was now, in. Now you say they didn't do Alabama any favors. They also didn't do Pitino any favors. No, absolutely. This is, this is probably the toughest uh, 15 seed spot there, there probably is. Oh, yes. Uh, Alabama was the number five overall seed. They, they were... Yeah. One right, like if Michigan had lost another game at some other point, Alabama would have gotten that. Would have been the that one seed. So, uh, moving on to the South region, let's go ahead and dive into that. Baylor, uh, their first number one seed, and you know, obviously, we we think they're going to beat Hartford in the first round. I mean, it, it, there's only been one sixteen over one uh, victory ever, ever, sure. and that was Virginia, you know, three years ago. Uh, but it's what one in one thirty nine. It's like 140 different matchups, and yeah. it's only happened one time. So we're going to assume that Baylor makes it to the second round. And waiting for them in round two is going to be either North Carolina, the eight seed, or Wisconsin, the nine seed, both of which can give you all kinds of fits. So that North Carolina-Wisconsin game is interesting. Yep. we we th- I think that's going to be one of the classic great matchups of the first round. I agree with you. I mean, that is, that is such an outstanding uh, conflict of styles. Because North yes. Carolina is so athletic, they've got guys that are going to be NBA guys. They are, they can run and gun. They can shoot. The th- they can do all of these different things, right? And Wisconsin is slow it down, play defense, get you know, get North Carolina to turn the ball over. And North right. Carolina is pretty young. Wisconsin, of course, is always old. You know, <laughs> I, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, Wisconsin had been great as of late. They're only seventeen and twelve on the year. But this is still a basketball team that can beat anybody. But this is also not a great North Carolina team either. So true. That's what that's what's fitting about it is is both of these teams are kind of in a lull of where they usually are historically have been. 
Yes, you are correct about that. The five seed here is Villanova. Of course, Colin Gillespie, the starting point guard, is out there. Uh, they get to face Winthrop, who has only lost one game all year, 23-1 and one as a 12 seed. Now, uh, the majority of those games were quad four games, including their only loss. You know, there is a reason why they're a 12 seed instead of, you know, whatever. But this is still a team that can win. And That's right. they are, uh, Winthrop is really, really well coached. And, I mean, obviously, you have to be if you're going to be 23-1. and one. Uh, Winthrop is number 70 in defensive efficiency, number 120 in offensive efficiency, but they like to get up and down the floor. They are number 11 in tempo. And, you know, if, if you don't have starting point guard experience, like, that, that's going to be some trouble for Villanova. And so, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one, I think. Uh, along with that, uh, your number four seed, it's Purdue against North Texas. The Mean Green getting in over Western Kentucky in, in the Conference USA Tournament Championship, uh, that was that was a little bit shocking to me. Like, I thought Western Kentucky was significantly better than North Texas, but they are a little bit on fire right now. I still think Purdue, it, it, they, they're still young technically, but they have grown up so much over the season. Uh, that is a fantastic basketball team, man. Pur- Purdue's one of the most underrated teams coming out of the Big Ten. Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah. really are. Even as a four seed, I mean, yeah, they, if they were just, if they were if they were in any other conference, they 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 would have competed to to win that conference. I mean, it really, they I mean, they took uh, they took Ohio State to overtime. No, like, yeah, that's right. They, they yeah. almost beat Ohio State, who ended up winning. Yeah, so. and I, I think Purdue would have beaten Michigan as well without without. I do too. I, I I like Purdue. I like Purdue a lot, but I liked Purdue. I mean, they were kind of my my you know my my sleeper pick, my 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 pick to win the the Big Ten. Yeah. You know, not taking chalk. So Texas Tech is the sixth seed. They faced off against Utah State. Utah State was one that, like, they weren't even one of the last four in, and I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Uh, a I lot thought of people, te- I thought uh, Texas Tech got a got a, a pretty pretty good pass here. Uh, Maybe most, I'm most completely certain. discrediting Utah State. But, but no, Utah State they they only have four quad one and quad two wins all season. Uh, two of them were over San Diego State. Two of them were over Colorado State. And and that's it. Like I, that's tough. I, I don't understand how they were able to get in. Um, they're twenty and eight, and they've got no really good wins on the resume. I just I don't I don't get it. like Colorado State didn't get into the field, and San Diego State got in as a six seed. Like they didn't win the conference tournament or anything. So I I just didn't understand Utah State at all. I I really thought they were going to be left out of this. But yeah. either way, Texas Tech, that's another one of those games. And to come in and be an 11 seed at that. Like, yeah. not just get in. Not even the play-in but, game. But they're getting in as, as like, a, a middle-tier team. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't I find get that in, I find that amazing. It's it's really, it's really interesting. Really interesting. Uh, Texas Tech, like, this is, obviously, we know what Chris Beard can do. Uh, yes. This is a fantastic basketball team. They, you know, their record's not not great. They're 17-10. However, no, also a lot of talent from the last couple of years where they were pretty amazing, but I, I trust Beard a lot. They are they are number twenty three at Ken Palm. They are thirty third in offensive efficiency and twenty fourth on defensive uh, efficiency. They are uh, a team that can cause you a lot of problems. Matt McClung, like or Mac McClung, like he is he's a superstar, yeah. and if he gets going, like obviously Texas Tech knows how to play defense. So I, I would expect them to get by Utah State. Uh, waiting for them in the next round will be the winner of Arkansas and Colgate. And this is one So of you want to take the over in this game, right? So much over. So much over. Uh, <laughs> You're talking me, about two teams. Uh, listen to this. All right? Go ahead. It's number 14 in the net, Arkansas, against number 9 in the net, Colgate. Now, it, the net thing is a little bit messed up because Colgate's conference uh, performed pretty well in their few non-conference games. And Colgate is, is 14-1. and one. Like, they are really, really good. Their right. only loss was way back in early December. So, I mean, they were rocking and rolling. Arkansas, number 17 in tempo. Colgate is number 25 in tempo. Uh, Arkansas, number 7 in the country, 82.4 points per game. Colgate is number 2, 86.4 points per game. Colgate is number 2 in the country, 40% from 3 this year. Jesus, like they that's are, hard to beat, man. Oh, it's insane! I cannot wait. I, I, we're gonna get a game in the two hundred. Like, so, <laughs> so I love, so I love Arkansas, yeah. and I'm a little biased. I, I really like Arkansas. I like the style of play they play. 
The last two games Arkansas played against Missouri in the SEC championship game, uh, the conference game uh, uh, tournament, tournament. Yeah. And, and against LSU after that, man, they had almost 20 turnovers. Um, not 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 in the two games, a game. Yes, a game. No, let me let me explain what's going on here. If if Jalen Williams does not play, they are in trouble. And I, I told he, you this last week. Uh, but aside from that, Arkansas is still insanely young. They I yes, mean, they oh, are no, not no, ready no. for prime time. They're gonna be they're gonna be real scary next year. They're gonna be oh, yeah. real scary next year. No, oh, I agree. But I, I think I think they can wreak havoc because I think their talent. I think Moody is probably one of the scariest guys. In the tournament, oh yeah, I mean that, he'll, he'll that be an most NBA people favorite. don't people don't know his name. Um, if you don't watch SEC basketball, he just didn't get a lot of national recognition. That guy's legit, but man, if you can give him fits, they're going to turn the ball over a lot. Like you think Colgate scores a bunch already? Give them give them fifteen to twenty extra possessions. Oh yeah, uh, it's Arkansas by the way, number fourteen in defensive efficiency. Um, yeah. You know, we'll see if they're able to slow down Colgate. When you've got a team on the other side that can hit Well, they couldn't slow down LSU. When they play another team that runs and tries to score a lot, that defensive efficiency goes off the window. Yeah. That's I it. think I some agree. of these numbers are styles of when they play. You play Ole Miss, you play, you know, you play two games, a couple of games against Mississippi State. Like, these are teams that don't score a lot anyway. A&M, like, you're not playing teams that score a bunch, so your defensive numbers look pretty good. You know, because they're they're an athletic and they're they're a pretty good defensive team. They're a really well coached team. When you play another team that runs with you, man, that that defensive visit they just went out the window. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, and then we'll close off with this: uh, Florida and Virginia Tech are the seven ten game. Uh, Virginia Tech, like the winner, of course, gets Ohio State or or Oral Roberts. I guess we can toss it out there. I would imagine Ohio State's going to get that done. But uh, I'm I'm curious about Virginia Tech. Like, can they get their mojo back? They've only played three games since February 3rd. Like, they had a, a massive COVID pause. They're okay right now, but they are, you know, they've lost two of the last three, and, and they have not looked very good. Now, they, no. it was against pretty decent competition. They did, in their in their senior day, blow out Wake Forest by, like, 40 points. Yeah. But that's Wake Forest. The, no, this like, isn't this isn't the Florida of old that we've seen, though. And this is a Florida team that they can absolutely hang with and they can absolutely beat. Yeah. No, they, they can if... If they if the same Virginia Tech team that we were used to early in the season, if that team shows right. up, if they don't, That's right. Florida can absolutely. Oh well, them. yeah, no. If that team doesn't show up, then anybody on this bracket could beat them. Yep, you are. It doesn't have to be Florida. If Florida's a good team, I'm not saying they don't deserve to be a tournament. They absolutely deserve to be here, and they're a good team. They're they're you know this just isn't the Florida team that I've always been afraid of. Yeah, no, you're you're 100 right about that. Uh, moving on to. The Midwest region, this is the last one, and then we'll get to uh, to a few questions to close us out. Midwest region, Illinois, they get to face off against the winner of, and I, I'm going to imagine that Illinois gets by Drexel. Uh, I do too. You know, but we'll we'll see. I think Illinois is the second best team in this tournament. Uh, their 8-9 game is... You think more, they're better than Baylor? Yes, I think they're better than Baylor. Right now. Okay. I think, I do, I think I they do are th- playing. They, they, they won the conference, and they probably won the regular season also in the best conference in basketball. So yes. that's pretty hard to argue against. You're probably right on that. They are. So they had a, a little bit of a break. Like, they – I want to say they started, like, 9-5. and five, Yeah. And they ended up 23-6. and six. Like Yeah, they, they, they've, they've gone on an unbelievable run. Yes, they are, they are smoking people. And, yes. and I really – like, the numbers say that Michigan is the second-best team – but we watched that. Illinois is, like, they destroyed Michigan at Michigan without their best player. Like, right. Illinois without their best player. So, it, no. now that they've got him back, like, they are just on a different level, man. It's They are so good. So good. So, but waiting for them in the second round, I think it's two teams that are greatly under Loyola Chicago is the eight seed, and Georgia Tech is the nine seed. That, yes. let, me give you, let me give you some of these numbers here. And so, Georgia Tech, if you want to just go based on you know, Ken Palm, net, whatever. Georgia Tech is number 32 at Ken Palm, number 33 on in the net. They are the number 27 offensive efficiency team in the country. Loyola is number 9 at Ken Palm, number 10 in the net, and number 1 in the country in defensive efficiency. They are ridiculous. We saw Porter Mosier do this, what, three, four years ago when they made it to the Final Four? Like, yes. now he's got a senior-laden team again. Like, this is... 
This is serious. This, this, is, a, this dude is a great coach. And, and, and how you know it's coaching is because every two to three years, they have a team like this that can go on a run. And that means it takes him a little bit to develop them. He's not getting one and done. He's not getting elite athletes. He's taking dudes around Chicago that can get into Loyola and, and he's, and he's teaching them the game of basketball, the way he wants it played. Yeah. That's, that's, in, that's incredible to me. And you're right. That guy, that team's, that team's great. I think it's going to be a really, really good matchup. At the other side of it, Josh Passner yeah. and getting back to the NCAA tournament. Like he, he made it back before Memphis did. And I'm going to tell you, I never thought that he was going to be able to get Georgia Tech to an NCAA tournament. And, and he just won the ACC tournament championship, man. Like I, I am, I, I don't totally know what to make of And it. there's no like more likable person than Josh. Pastor. He is the most fun guy to root for. Like yes. he's just so happy all the time. The post game interview after they beat Florida state to win the title He's the most positive person I've ever I've ever been around. I've ever heard talk. I, I mean, he really is. And his players love him. Yes. Absolutely love him. And he needs to be at a school like Georgia Tech. Yes. He did not need to coach a school like Memphis. You know, way different caliber of people. But the academic, he needs to be at an academic school and 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 coach coach guys with brains a little bit better. He, he can be a little bit of a goober at Georgia Tech and get away with it, right? And get away with it. You can't be a goober. <laughs> that's a word. That is the perfect word. You can't go to Kentucky, Memphis, Kansas, these places and be a goober. You just can't. It's not allowed. At Georgia Tech though, it, oh, it makes you yeah. fun to root for. I mean, that's that, right. and that, he, hey, he has that G whiz, that perfect smile, that just just young boy charm yes. is just un Believable, love Pastner. His I, uh, his afro right now is yeah. absolutely legit. Like it is it's absolutely so legit. Great. It's uh, so he, great. He looks like a, a '70s mob boss right now. It's, it's what he looks like. I mean, it's incredible. I he, think he looks like an. They, is this wrong to say? I think he looks like an old school, like '70s Jewish accountant. No, that that makes sense. That makes sense. No, he's he he. he like, I think he's about to audit somebody. He uh, so. Matt Norlander from CBS on on his podcast always calls him thick Josh Pasner. Like that's he always tosses that brain. He looks completely different than he did five years ago when he was coaching the Tigers. But I, I'm glad he made it back, man. Um moving on from there, Tennessee, the five seed against Oregon State. Oregon State got in because they won the Pac 12 tournament. And that was unfriggin believable that they were able to do that. I never would have imagined that they would have made it like that far. But Oregon State, you know. They are playing really, really well. Um, you know, they're seven and two in their last nine. They avenged both of those losses in the conference tournament. They were to Oregon and Colorado, both I know. Uh, both top seven seeds. Like Oregon State looks like they could be a legit team. Tennessee. I've enjoyed watching Oregon State go on the run. They went through the Pac-12. Oh yes, oh, I yes. really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, Tennessee's forward John Fulkerson, he may be out due to a facial fracture that was suffered. Yeah, that, I don't think that guy's playing. That, maybe, maybe by next week they can get like one of those face shields and get it on him and him him be able to play with it. But his face looks jacked. His eye looks jacked up. Yeah, he couldn't even see out of that eye, man. Like, no, it was, he, I mean it's a it's a a fracture. Of his face. Yes. Like, of his, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's God. not good. Awful. It's not good. That was such a dirty play by that Florida. I, I, I would be surprised yep. if that Florida player plays, uh, but I don't remember Surely who it was. Not. And, Surely he's been suspended, right? I mean, they. I don't know. I don't know. Holy they ha- I haven't seen anything yet, uh, but I would be shocked if he wasn't. So so we'll see. And that might play into that you know, Virginia Tech game with Florida, but I I just don't know, man. That was such a dirty play. That was so dirty. Um <laughs> Moving on, the 13 seed Liberty against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, I was shocked that they were a four seed. They they are 10 and 6 in quad one victories or in quad one games this year. That 10 wins against quad one opponents is the second most in the country behind Illinois this year. Yeah, I thought they were underseeded, and I really I liked them against Texas a lot. They they impressed me during that during the uh, Big 12 tournament. Oh yeah, I mean, they, they, only the second their, team. Their to, run, their run was really good. Only the second team to beat Baylor this year. Uh, Cade that's Cunningham, right, that's of right. course. The, yeah, like, you're exactly right. If you can, if you can ride Cade Cunningham, like he'll be the superstar. This they is, they let Texas get away from him late, and they just couldn't do anything about it. Now you're right about that. Um, and no, I mean they are, they're primed to lose a game like this. They are young, sure, of course, sure. But uh, it, 
But hey, at Liberty, nineteen and two in their last twenty one games. Uh, Liberty is a good team, man. They, they yeah, just pretty good resume. Keep on going back uh, as as a Sun champions. Like they upset Mississippi State in the tournament a couple of years ago. I mean, yep. this legit team, legit team. So we shall see. Uh, but if man, if if those seeds hold, and we can get Oklahoma State and Illinois in the Sweet Sixteen, oh, that would be fantastic. Fantastic. Oh yeah. So moving on from there, Syracuse got in. Everybody kind of thought that Jim Beheim and that bunch would uh, would be out because of Georgetown getting in and everything else. Like we we thought that their bubble was going to pop. Instead, they're not even one of the the last four in. They don't get a play in game. No, they get to go. In. They get to play against number six San Diego State. This is who I thought was going to be matched up against a Michigan State in that you know, play-in oh, yeah. game, but we want to get a big number and make people watch this this damn thing. This is the team I thought was going to match up against Michigan State. That's what I thought. And then yeah. it, the UCLA thing makes perfect sense because they, they want ratings from both sides. Right? The, yeah, now you get both. They get both coast, but yep. I just wonder, are you really getting UCLA ratings anymore? I I think you'd And be I don't surprised. know the answer to that. I don't know the answer. Maybe you are, and I just, I'm not paying attention. But, but Syrac- Syracuse, oh, sorry, uh, UCLA has hope right now. Like they, okay. Mick Cronin, new coach, only his second year, finally got him back to the tournament. Like I, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, Syracuse, though, as the 11 seed, uh, this matchup is fascinating. Syracuse number 22 in offensive efficiency, San Diego State number 11 in defensive efficiency. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen here. I would take the under either way because I would uh, probably do that because you know teams getting in in this tournament if you're not used to seeing a defense like Syracuse this is one of those styles make fights and and they catch people usually early you know whether if they're under seed or not because you're just not you're not ready for it oh yeah oh yeah no I can't and wait they to run it perfect that. um moving on the three seed is West Virginia now this, this is a team that could absolutely make a final four they haven't had a lot of luck lately but they've played a ton of close know. games you you know my you know my love here. Oh, it, a Huggy Bear. Huggy That's Bear all over the place. That's my guy. Now, they are facing Moorhead State, who has won 19 of their last 20. Uh, they won the OVC tournament. That seems good. Tournament. I didn't know anything about them, but that seems yeah. good. They, uh, they've won 19 of 20. They won the uh, Ohio Valley Conference, the OVC tournament, over Belmont, who only had two losses on the year before that game. Um, well, Belmont's yeah. usually in this thing because they usually win their tournament. You got it. You got it. But... Not so this go around. Moorhead yeah. State went on a run this year. Uh, West Virginia, like th- this, isn't a usual West Virginia team. Nope. They are. Um, let's see, where are they on Ken Palm? Number twenty-seven at Ken Palm. They are number eleven in offensive efficiency and number sixty-five in defense. Like I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't get that. Uh, I would imagine they'll they'll be able to turn it on when they need to. I but think so. This is. This is a fantastic team that plays with a ton of heart. I, I think they'll get through that. Um, and Love waiting them. waiting for them Love on the other so side, much. of course, is Syracuse. If you get a Jim Beheim and Bob Huggins matchup, I mean, that's just that's so great. Oh. So great. So, finally, the last uh, last little bracket here, Clemson and Rutgers, 7 and 10 seeds. Uh, Rutgers, first time making the tournament in, like, forever. I don't know. Yeah, how like long ago? Four, I don't know. Years, it's been a long like time. Yeah, it's been, it's been forever. And Steve Peichel would have made it last year. Uh, had Probably. they not been canceled. Yep. Uh, That's right. Because they, they were a better team last year than they are this year, and they still yeah, have I was about to say, yeah, yeah. But uh, those two teams, like Clemson lost two of their last three. Uh, they, they've not looked great. as of, I mean, they lost in the first round of the AC, well, I guess second round of the ACC tournament yep. to Miami. Like, not a they're, not a they're limp. Team. They're definitely limping into this thing. And Rutgers is the same way. They uh, they are four and five in their last nine. They haven't beaten a good team since mid-January. Like, they have filled up on, you know, Northwestern, and uh, in Minnesota and stuff like that, it, it, it just not good, like not great. But but they're still there. And now, two not great teams that are kind of limping to the finish get to face off against each other to go and play the winner of Houston and Cleveland State, which I would imagine will be Houston. All right. So this is my question now. All right. Now I've got I've got several friends that are alumni of Cleveland State. Okay. Okay. I know, I know people from this place. Live right down the road from them. Uh, downtown Cleveland. So it's a it's a nice campus, nice nice little area of downtown. Cleveland State have any chance at all? I don't think so. Cleveland State number one ninety nine in offensive efficiency. Number one. Houston's kind of beating the hell out of everybody they've played except Memphis. Yeah, like Cleveland State is uh, is nineteen and seven now. Dennis Gates, a former Leonard Hamilton assistant, really really 
well-respected coach, and everybody thinks yeah. that he's going to be up for probably the Penn State job or the Boston College job. You know, he, yeah, he, good job, good jobs. Yes, yeah. um, it, you know they they won the Horizon League tournament. They they lost uh, two of their last four games to Detroit and Purdue Fort Wayne. Like not not great. Like they're not on any kind of massive run. They like I said, nineteen and seven. They're they're good. I just don't think they have any any way. I mean, as of right now, Ken Palm projects Houston to win that game seventy four to fifty seven. That doesn't surprise me. And and they give Houston a ninety four percent chance to win. So let me ask you another question. This is a Memphis Homer question. Okay. Now Memphis didn't beat Houston, but we're the only team that played them crazy close throughout this tournament. Everybody else, they just kind of beat the hell out of. But the last game of the season before before the tournament, you know, they had to pull a horseshoe out of the deepest recessions of their buttholes to win that game. So and then Memphis took them down to the wire in the tournament, and then they kind of beat the hell out of everybody else. So here is what is Houston that a styles did. make fights and just Memphis just matches up well with them, but they well, find a way to win. Memphis was uh, number, let's see, hold on. Did it, did, uh, Memphis is number three in the country in defensive efficiency. Mm-hmm. And they've got guys that can make big shots when they need them, right? So the the pace of play fits well with Memphis. Uh, it's just two teams full of bulldogs that are just going to fight the whole game. Yeah. And, and yeah, like at Memphis. like The I, rest I, of the AAC just doesn't have that. No, absolutely not. Here's, okay. here's what Houston did. Uh, they... So, after they got beat by East Carolina, uh, and, and before East Carolina, they beat everybody by 20-plus. I was just about for, to say by by big double digits, yeah. not not just by 10, but I was thinking 15 they, or more. They but were yeah. smoking everybody. So, they, they lost yeah. to East Carolina on February 3rd. Then they played Our Lady of the Lake, beat them 112 to 46. Uh, they beat South Florida by 17 on the road. And then they lost by five at Wichita State. That's how they ended up losing the conference yep. uh, title. I remember saying they didn't. They didn't get the regular season conference title. This is what they did after they lost to Wichita State. They turned around. They they beat Cincinnati ninety to fifty two. They beat Western Kentucky eighty one to fifty seven. They beat South Florida ninety eight to fifty two. And then they had to beat Memphis on a buzzer beater. So <sighs> then they get into the AAC tournament. They beat Tulane seventy seven to fifty two. And then they beat Memphis by two. Two, and, then, and then they beat Cincinnati ninety-one to fifty-four. That Cincinnati game is almost identical. Almost yes. identical scores. Yeah, ninety to fifty-two and ninety-one to fifty-four. I mean, that is that is an ass threshing. Yes, so. yes. No, I just found it strange that they beat the hell out of everybody. They beat Memphis also, but Memphis is the only team that gave them all they wanted, and it just took kind of miracles to beat Memphis. The the seating and and the way that the brackets fell. Houston is, I'm not going to say guaranteed. They're but it set is up pretty nicely. Very likely that they are going to be in the Sweet 16 against um, either West Virginia or uh, or Syracuse or San Diego State. I'm pulling you know? hard from Huggy Bear. Yeah. No, I'll I, tell you this. I wouldn't mind to see that. Houston against, like, Kelvin Sampson against Bob Huggins would be fantastic. That's a matchup uh, I'd, I'd pay to watch. Fantastic. All right, so let's get out of that. Let's ask a few questions, and I'm going to ask you first. Come on. What 10-plus seed can make the Sweet 16? 10-plus? Yes. Um, you want me to tell you mine? No. I have. I mean, I have a few. You can go ahead and tell me yours, I, but I have one. Uh, I like Georgetown. So, so Georgetown's one. I've got another one. All right, you're, not you gonna, you're not going to like this one. I, I think Iona. You think so? Yeah, I, I'm going to tell you if Rick Pitino, if it's Rick Pitino, I know he might get his ass smoked when he gets to the Sweet 16, but he has a chance to knock off Alabama and UConn or Alabama and Maryland. Like two, one of those, the second day game is a premier basketball school and the other team is a monster school right now with a ton of hype behind it. That's exactly what Rick Pitino wants. It, entirely possible. Um, I'll tell you this: if they if he gets by Bama, agreed. I think he I think he 100 percent can win the next game. I I was looking at the winner of Michigan State UCLA. Well, if it's if you give me Michigan State, I trust them more than UCLA. Agreed. Agreed. I like both coaches and I like their styles in in March. Right. Yeah. Um, I I think that 
like how how funny would it be to get Mick Cronin his first Sweet Sixteen appearance after he's moved to UCLA and after he's in a playing game? And he's he's got to get a playing game, so he's he had to actually win an extra game to get there. Yeah. He had to win three of them to get there. So yeah, I, I did like those. Um, you know, and, and nobody, I think that's the that's the. I'll be. Sh- I mean, somebody else is probably going to do it, but it'll shock me. It'll, it'll be something I'm not. I'm not expecting. If if Arkansas is not like if if they're not ready for Colgate, I, maybe we. Man, can see but Colgate. I just don't see. I don't see either of those teams. Maybe Arkansas. I don't see Colgate being able to do that to to Texas Tech. I think Texas Tech defense. You're going to have to have athletes to hang with Texas Tech and to score on them. You can't Agreed. just score on them because you're. You're fast. You run a hot pace. Agreed. Uh, but That's it, my but only problem is Colgate they, can get hot. They got to they got to get by Arkansas, but getting by Arkansas and Texas, it's the reason offensive teams just I struggle with picking them to go far in the tournament because you have to stay hot for weekends of plural. Yeah, like long periods of time, and and I don't trust that enough. That's 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 my only knock on them. Um. Liberty is another interesting one. If if they can find a way to get past Oklahoma State, like I wonder if Oklahoma State put everything well, they had into the Big Twelve temp, uh, title game. You know what we'll if? Well, I mean, there's a world where we get a Liberty uh, Oregon State matchup if Tennessee's not healthy and Oregon State's still hot. I mean, there's a yeah. there's a world where one of those teams is getting there. Yeah, no, it's entirely possible. So that I mean, that could happen. That could absolutely happen. So I I don't have any faith in uh, like I, I think Winthrop could get by Villanova. Uh, but I don't think that they can get by Purdue. Um, no, I don't either. No, I don't. I don't think they're beating both those teams. But there's nobody else I really truly see winning, winning two games. Uh, I mean, so UCSB, you know, could they beat Creighton? Yeah, you know, if Virginia is not the Virginia and they're dealing with COVID issues, like once we're past the first weekend, like the first round, there it's just a forfeit, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So, so I mean, Eastern Washington against uh, Kansas. I mean, it, they've they have. You could won, get something uh, like that to where you win the first round, and then that second round team gets COVID and you get in. I mean, we're yeah. gonna have a lot of stuff like that. Maybe not a lot. I think we're gonna have at least one team get by because of forfeit. Uh, Eastern Washington has won thirteen of their last fourteen games uh, in the Big Sky Conference, and yep. they are, uh, let's see, number seventy three in the country. As far as three point percentage goes, at thirty five point nine percent, but that has picked up a ton as of late. Uh, this this is what their scores have been: uh, 82, 68, 94, 89, 90, 93, 85, 90, 90, 75, 66, 78, 65. Like they, when they get hot, they can light it up. Yeah. Now, if if something happens and they don't have to play Kansas, well. In the very next round, you've got Wichita State, Drake, or USC. If, well, if so that was the next it, question. If we're talking, I'm talking myself more into more teams. I guess what are what are the chances of Wichita State being able to get in there? I think it's possible. Like I think they could absolutely beat Drake, and then you know USC has got Evan Mobley, and they've been pretty good all year. They've been pretty good. I'm not knocking USC at all, but they've I don't know if they're talent. unbeatable. They, they've got talent, but they they are definitely beatable. Like yeah. they they don't play like the chemistry just seems kind of weird with them. So yeah, they're a one man show, and I think it sees that. And you know, um, anyway, I, I you know, I there are more options. My favorite is the one you said, Georgetown. Georgetown. That's what I want. That's what I think, and I actually think they, I kind of think they can. I think they match up against Colorado, who I think is way overseeded than they should be, and and then they got to get by either Florida State or or, or uh, UNCG. I mean. Florida State has been limping to the finish. Like they, they're a really good team. The numbers they play a difference. They're the only team that still runs out like four big men. I mean, and a point guard. Florida State is two and three in their last five games, and they just you know, I I don't know. I don't know. It's a different style of basketball than most everybody else plays. That is true. Which which sometimes makes it really hard to prepare for and to play against. And when they're on, it makes them just a fit for you. I mean, they've got, what, four or five, seven-footers on the team? Nobody else has that. Like, they're the, I think they're the, definitely the biggest, longest team in, in the conference, in the yes. tournament. So Yes, you are correct about that. Uh, the first number one seed to lose. Uh, are we both going to agree, Michigan here? Michigan. Michigan. I, I – I know, I know, I'm biased, but I'm. Not, that's not just an LSU thing. I think Saint, I think LSU or Saint Bonds 
can beat Michigan. I think so as well. Uh, the the second one there, I think, would be Baylor. I think if North Carolina is feeling it, uh, or or even Wisconsin. Or, but, yeah, but I think. My, uh, see, I don't know that I agree with that. I think it has to be North Carolina. I think it does too. I think it does I think too. only North Carolina could beat Baylor. I don't think Wisconsin can beat Baylor. I I think I agree. I think I agree. But North Carolina better. They're going to need a perfect basketball game. Yep, and they, I mean, they have played a well, couple they can't of those do it. And they've got, they've got a coach with the experience that knows how to coach in the tournament. You've got that right. Uh, how many 12-5 upsets are you seeing? I think, I, I think we're going to split it down the middle. I think we're going to get five, uh, two of them, two-two. I, I think so, I think so as well. I, I like yeah. Winthrop a lot over Villanova, and I like, um, uh, I like Georgetown a lot. Uh, I could 100% see Oregon State over Tennessee. I, I do yeah. think Tennessee is still a vastly better like more superior this is a team. better team. I think Coach Barnes is a good on the on the week first 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 game. Um, he didn't always get to the second weekend, but he usually wins the first game. Um, and and then and then um, and then you see, uh, you know, I just I Creighton doesn't look right. No, I I agree with you. Georgetown looked like they broke Creighton, and it's funny because Creighton looked really really good in the game before that. But yes, but they look like they. I mean, I guess I, that is super last thing I saw. But I saw this Georgetown team who's who struggled most of the year get hot, and they didn't just beat them. They, okay, they beat the hell out of them. There was never a moment in the game after the ball after the game started well, where yeah. Creighton had a chance to win the game. I mean, it was and that's it was the last thing I game. saw. And so I just think, well, why can they not win that game? It's a 12 5. 12 fives happen all the time. Sure. Creighton doesn't look scary at all. Yeah. I mean, if all four of them win, it wouldn't shock me, by the way. I don't know. Have we ever had a year where all four won? I don't think so. Uh, but I know you, we've you had three Santa out Barbara. of the four before. Like, UC Santa Barbara is is legit. Like, they are... Uh, no, UC... Yeah, no, they're good. They're number they're 69. This is, not, this is not a joke team. They're, they're, they're a good team. And I just... But I'm by it. It's the it's a recency bias with Creighton. No, that I mean, that absolutely makes sense. UC Santa Barbara is 22 and 4. Uh, they were number sixty nine at um, uh, at Ken Palm. Joe Pasternak is their head coach, and uh, and they're they're the Gauchos. Obviously, we'll be pulling for the nickname. But well, no. <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. I, is it weird that I think Georgetown's a better? T- that could be recently by I think Georgetown's a better team than Colorado. Am I wrong on? Is that I'm just wrong, right? That's just my my I'm blinded by my. GT full, love full season. You are hundred percent wrong. Uh, if we were well, just, I'm looking not worried recent, about full season. I'm worried about right now. I don't care what happened in November. Uh, I think Georgetown is a better team right now. Yeah, I think they're a better team right now. Yeah, I I, I 100 agree with you. Uh, the seating fits. The seating is See, what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I, but, I think you're right. I think you're right. So, uh, it, other than Colorado is overseeded as a five seed, uh, they still should be a higher seed than Georgetown. Yeah. You know, I think I trust Tennessee. Out of all the five seeds, Tennessee is the one I trust the most. Is yeah. that who you trust the most? I think. I or might, would you trust Villanova more? I think I might trust not Villanova because without Colin Gillespie, I don't. I don't know what to expect from them. So yeah, um, yeah I, so I think I think Tennessee is the only five seed I actually trust. I I trust Creighton. Like Zigarowski is is an incredible player, and and they've got a ton of talent on that team. They can light it up. Like I, but but there is something weird. I, I guess Tennessee is who I trust, except that I don't really trust them. So, you know, I like, I don't know, man. I, I wonder, I wonder how much that SEC tournament broke them, um, because they had a 15 point lead over Alabama with with 14 minutes left in the game and lost by five. Like they they should have won that ball game. So oh, okay, but I, I mean that is Alabama. Like Alabama is one of the best teams in the country. Agreed. Uh, so, but it's it's not just that. Like, if you just look at what Tennessee has done, like, yeah, they've got the two wins over Florida recently uh, to close out the season, and then in their first game in the uh, in the SEC tournament. But if you look at Tennessee, man, like they lost uh, they lost at Auburn, who's not very good. They lost at home by fifteen to Kentucky uh, late in the season. They lost, uh, and now losing at LSU is nothing to to be you know upset about. But like, you know, they they lost. Uh, at Ole Miss, like earlier in February, you know, and Ole Miss is okay, but Tennessee should be better than them. And I just, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know what to make out of them. Sounds like, like they lost a lot of road games. They, uh, well, no, they they lost home games as well, though. I mean, they lost at home to Missouri. They lost at home to Kentucky. Uh, they lost, you know, yeah, at okay. Auburn, at LSU, and at Ole Miss. Like, I just. All right, all right. I don't know. Okay. Like, they, they matched up well against Florida, 
But other than that, like they've they've beaten Vanderbilt and South Carolina and Georgia in the last month. Like I, you know, like I, I don't know I don't know whether to trust them or not in this spot. Uh, I do think they are a better team than uh, than Oregon State, but I think Oregon yeah. State's hotter right now. So, uh, and finally, you know, just initial implicate like initial looking at the bracket. This isn't your final pick, but just off the top of your head right now, who you think is making the final four? God, I hate doing this. I hate it. Um, Iowa. I'm going Homer LSU. Um, I kind of want to. I kind of want to pick either Arkansas or t- Texas Tech. And uh, oh, see, that's the problem. Is there are three teams I love in that South bracket? Arkansas, Texas Tech, and Purdue are all three, four, uh, three, six, four seeds. Um, don't don't have an answer there. That's the one bracket that I'm more up in the air on. And uh, I'd probably the only one seed I think makes is is Illinois. I I'm gonna have Gonzaga there. I and so my homer pick would be Alabama, but I could 100 percent see UConn. Like I, I I could see a Shabazz Napier or Kimba Walker kind of thing happening yeah. in James yeah, Book just, Knight. Yeah, just, one one guy yeah. get oh, this was gonna happen in this tournament, by the way. Yeah. Is we're gonna learn somebody's name at a level we didn't know their name before. Like we know it now. You you ran off a bunch of the star players on most of these teams, but but the whole world is going to know their name. They're gonna be the most famous person for about three weeks. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh Baylor, I've got up there, but I, you know, See, I, my problem is I think that's the hardest bracket for for the number one seed to get out of, because because I I named the three teams that I like better than 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 them to pull off an upset, and I didn't even pick North Carolina, which they could absolutely lose to North Carolina if North Carolina could get by Wisconsin. Yeah, um, that, that's the problem is I think that's the hardest road they got because if they get through North Carolina, I think they got to get through Purdue. And if they get through Purdue, then they got to get through either Arkansas or Texas Tech or, who, you know, that's who I think is coming out of that side. You know, I, I'm sure Ohio State people are throwing, you know, shade at me, but that's fine. Baylor is number 85 in the country in experience. Um, and out of the NCAA tournament field, they are like number 17 or 18 in the tournament. So they've got a ton of experience. I, I like yeah. them – you know, for the most part. But it, would it shock me if Purdue makes it? Would it shock me if Texas Tech or Arkansas finds a way to get there? Uh, no. Uh, would it shock me if Ohio State gets there? No. Like no. It, it, Ohio State started playing really, really well in the Big Ten That's tournament. Right. Um, and they've been through some wars, man. Like that, those well, they're, the big most, they're the most battle-tested two-seed out there. Oh, absolutely. I do absolutely. think they're the most battle-tested two-seed. Um, and then in the Midwest region, I, I kind of – then this is a, a not a homer pick, but just a favorite pick. I, I kind of like Oklahoma State here. Like I now okay. I understand. I like I, see I, I could see them getting beat in the first round. Yeah. Um. But I could also see them winning every game going forward because they've got that star player and they've got dudes that were able to win games without him. My 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 homer pick here would be West Virginia, but I that shocked the shit out of me. I I don't like. I, I think the bracket fell really really well for Houston. But I don't like, like in the in the in the truth of it. I think we're going to end up that. I think that's the one bracket. Maybe it's not the one bracket. the The West bracket, we probably I could see us getting a one versus two in the Elite Eight. This bracket, I see us getting a one versus two. I don't I don't know that we're getting a one versus two in the other ones. I think we're seeing upsets. Yeah, I think this yeah. tournament's going to be it's going to be known for the chaos. I mean, look at the conference tournaments. I mean, yes. my gosh. So, yeah, I think yes. it's going to be crazy. Uh, we spent an hour doing this. We were uh, we, we talked about doing 30 minutes, but, hey, uh, we just talked about the entire bracket, and we're going to be talking about it again on Looks the live like we hit all 64 teams plus some play-in game stuff. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I feel pretty good about it. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and close this thing out. Let's, uh, let's dive off of it. You guys know what to do. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. And, of course, SBRPicks.com slash NCAAF. That is our college football gambling coverage over there, Sportsbook Review. They are a fantastic crew. Go and check out our weekly college football show on YouTube. You can search out SBR Picks there. That is the easiest way to do it. 
All right, brother. Let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up, and we will be back with you guys on Monday afternoon to do the uh, the live show. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And uh, and hey, as soon as those lines hit for the NCAA tournament, hopefully you guys can cash some tickets. We'll uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.